Hey guys, Spud Knocker here. Welcome back to DCS World. And today, we're just going to take a nice relaxing free flight mission uh, across the southern portion of the Caucasus map uh, from Batumi over to Vizani, which is near Tbilisi, which is the capital of Georgia. Figured we'd take a look and talk about some uh, new DCS World news. Maybe some real-world aviation news, and uh, just have a relaxing kind of exploring flight. Uh, take a look at an area that I don't see many people flying on. So we'll hop into the cockpit and we'll get started here. So let's turn on some lights. It's a little bit dark this morning. Turn the flaps on. Everything else looks good. Turn your nozzles down to about 30. We'll make a pretty conventional takeoff this morning. So here we go. We're going to push up the throttles. taken off. So the southern part of the map from Batumi out to Tbilisi. I don't see very many people flying on it uh, on YouTube or many missions that incorporate that area. Most of the action is in the big valley that runs through the middle of Georgia and through the um, mountains leading to Russia, which makes sense. That's where your, your bad guys are going to be usually. But the southern portion of the map is pretty cool. It's got lots of uh, valleys, some tall mountains, and it's great for some low-level flying and some, uh, you know, ridge crossings and things like that. It's okay. slow down here and let him catch up. stutter there. Not totally sure why. Probably because I'm recording this, but that's okay. We'll fly down this valley. Pretty cool how beautiful DCS World can be. 
kind of fun to just take a nice little free flight like this once in a while and just really enjoy what we have. A lot of pilots, military pilots specifically, will say taking a jet cross country, a uh, nice long flight, which should take a few hours or so. It's a really good way to learn the jet, especially if you're new to the aircraft. Uh, because you just have time to work the systems and kind of play with things and work things out and just get really well acquainted with the jet. So we'll turn on our radar altimeter. So there's been lots of news uh, lately about things happening in DCS world. I personally have pre-purchased the F-A-18C Hornet, which uh, WAGS recently stated on Facebook that is being rushed to get the press version out uh, so it can start to be reviewed by different folks and then hopefully soon after that roll that out into the uh, early access version for us consumers. So I've been really excited about that, that's for sure. And of course there's the Persian Gulf map, which I'm also super excited about. I've also pre-ordered that. Had to wait a few days, uh, which is uncharacteristic, so I of course had to get some money in the bank to pay for that. I usually tend to pre-order things almost right off the bat just because I'm such a huge fan of DCS World. I'm definitely excited for the Persian Gulf map. I hope that it'll help uh, the number of people on multiplayer servers because we'll have a map that is a real world hotspot um, that could be a big um, battle if uh, something were to ever go wrong in that area. Hopefully it never does but it'd be it's a really cool scenario for a game like ECS World and having Iran as a faction in ECS World I believe will definitely help uh, multiplayer and other other things because you'll have two factions you know the uh, Arab slash NATO or other countries that uh, have full fidelity modules on their side as well as Iran which will have some full fidelity modules so instead of having Russian FC3 aircraft which are simplified uh, fighting uh, full model aircraft, like the American aircraft coming out, you'll have, you know, full fidelity F-4s, F-5s, and F-14s against full fidelity American F-A-18s, Harriers, uh, uh, you know, UAE Mirages, and other aircraft, which will definitely help uh, even out things and make things a little bit more fair, because I know that's a big gripe people tend to have, is, uh, having simplified aircraft flying against full fidelity aircraft. So hopefully that'll be a big boon to multiplayer. I think it will, or at least I hope it will. And uh, that's why I hope the Persian Gulf map definitely sells well. I think it's a really pretty map as well. Or at least it has been shown to be. We're going to fly down this valley here.
I'm also hoping that the Persian Gulf map serves as a really good performance, a good, really good map performance-wise is what I'm trying to say, uh, because it doesn't have quite as many trees, or nearly as many trees, as uh, our Caucasus map here has. If you saw some stuttering there, which I believe is a result of our uh, all that those trees we were flying around. There's definitely some cool geography out here on the southern side of the map. Like I said earlier, there's lots of uh, big valleys like we're flying through here and other things that are pretty cool to explore that uh, are very unpopulated. There's not many towns or cities or anything on this side of the map. There's a bridge. In terms of news from real life aviation, two kind of interesting stories, kind of about the end of the career of a couple jets, is the U.S. Navy's legacy Hornets, that would be the FA-18A, FA-18B, FA-18C, and D, have made their last cruise aboard a U.S. Navy aircraft carrier. This is due to the Navy's new plan of giving all their legacy Hornets to the Marines to help ease the burden uh, that they're feeling in terms of maintenance of these older jets. The Marines, as of late, have been really struggling to keep their legacy Hornets, Harriers, and EA-6B intruders airworthy, and their readiness rates have plummeted a bit which uh, the Navy is hoping to bring those rates back up by infusing uh, more lower time airframes from the Navy into the Marines. Another piece of real world aviation news is the missile strikes uh, last Thursday on Syrian chemical weapons production facilities storage facilities and uh, launching capabilities. Of course, I'm sure everyone's heard of that. But what's interesting about that is uh, the B-1 Lancers that fired a bunch of JASM uh, cruise missiles were electronically escorted by Marine Corps EA-6B Prowlers stationed in Kuwait with the Marine Air Group there in Kuwait. And what's, what's interesting about this is it's probably going to be the last major combat operation by EA-6B Prowlers before their retirement. So that'll certainly be the end of an era when those last EA-6s are taken out of service. Looks like we got a real deep river gorge there with a real flat plateau, which is kind of cool. thinking that we didn't really need our external tanks. We probably could have made this flight with uh, just our internal fuel. But that's okay. You live and you learn. So let's take 
take a look and see what the Takan for Vizani is. Takan 22X. Try that again in a second here. Pretty amazing. Eagle Dynamics certainly put a heck of a lot of work in to turn this old map into something really beautiful again, which I certainly appreciate. All right, let's try Tacan again. Am I forgetting how to do this? We say it was twenty two. does not want to work. I'm probably doing it wrong. That's all right. My trusty wingman out there. Helping me do some exploring. It's hard not to step outside and take a look at the beautiful models skins that are available for not just the Harrier but all DCS World Aircraft. All skins that I use in my video are publicly available and are on the ED website under the user files section. So I never use skins that are private or difficult to find. I like this uh, VMA 223 tag skin. I think it's really cool. I love the, the yellow and red sunburst, like the uh, Arizona flag on the tail. I think that's really cool. Ah, oh, so it looks like we did get our tech hand to work. I guess I didn't notice a little tick up there.
Another cool thing that should hopefully be available soon is the moving map is said to be pretty much complete by Rosbaum. So hopefully that'll get implemented uh, as soon as possible. That would be awesome. Sure would make navigating in multiplayer a lot easier since we can't yet enter our own waypoints. And most multiplayer servers don't have free planned out waypoints for the jets that are on them. So, we're coming down out of the mountains, out towards Tbilisi, and we're getting close to Vizani. So there's the large city of Tbilisi. And I think this is actually my first time flying over Tbilisi in 2.5. Sure is cool. a little bit of turbulence. I think we're going to be landing in a crosswind, so hopefully I don't muck up the landing too bad. one of the civilian airports here near, near Tbilisi. The last time I spent all that much time out here was when I originally played through the Mirage campaign. That is uh, based here in the Caucasus that comes with the jet. So there is runway 31.
I told him to RPTB. I wonder if he's going to land at Zani, or if he's going to fly all the way back to Batumi. I don't think he'll fly back to Batumi, but I guess we'll see. Got his speed break out, so. straight in conventional landing, especially with the crosswind we're experiencing. Turn more up a bit. Probably one of the better uh, conventional landings I've done in the Harrier, so that's nice. I could do it live on a recording. Yep, one man's coming in for a landing. Looks like he's coming in for a vertical landing. I think he's too heavy. AI kind of does weird things when the jets are too heavy. But we'll go ahead and just uh, shut her down here. Yeah, 
he's going a little nutty, but that's to be expected with the AI. get out of the cockpit. So, thanks for watching guys. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. I know this wasn't a very substantive video, but uh, it, was some fu it was fun to make and definitely needed a nice, long, relaxing flight after a long Monday in the rain. Thanks a lot guys, and I'll see you next time.